Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I've got some exciting updates to share on this 224 Valkyrie series that we've been working through. If you've been watching, I built this awesome Remington 700. I built this awesome AR-15. I've got a build story coming up on that soon. I've got a couple details to work out uh, that I'm working through, just some minor stuff. But uh, I've been geeking out at the range. I've been working on load development. I've been shooting at 100 yards. I've been looking at groups on paper. I've been measuring velocities with the chronograph. To be honest, it's kind of been driving me nuts a little bit. You can go a little bit insane if you look too closely at your spreadsheet and you obsess too much about the numbers. So I decided it was time for some fun. So I called up my buddy Eric Peterson. You saw him in my welding video when we talked about the shop doors. And I was like, hey, let's go shoot to 600 yards and let's take the drone and let's hover it right over the targets and let's see what we can do. So the day started by hiking up the hill to the targets. This is work around here. You're not gonna be able to shoot at 600 yards without a little bit of work. So we hiked all the way up to the target area and Eric painted the targets and then we made our way back down. We grabbed both of the rifles, we grabbed all the stuff that we were gonna to need to shoot and hiked up the other side of the hill. It is a bit of work, but I tell you, it's totally worth it. We got everything set up. We flew the drone out to the 600 yard target area, got the shooting mat set up, and now it's time to get down to business with both of these rifles. Now I'm working with my Nosler 70 grain RDF load. I've been working a little bit with the Hornady 88 grain ELDMs and I have to switch powder because I had a compressed load. It's a long story, but I'm gonna work my way up in bullet weights. The 70 RDF load shoots super good. With this load, 20 and a half grains of Varget, I was able to shoot a third of an inch group with about 0.3 inches with the bolt gun and I got it down to 0.5 inches with the AR-15. It's kind of funny, you go from the bolt gun over to the AR-15 and all of a sudden things feel a lot more wobbly. You gotta work a lot harder to get those groups down. Half inches where I wanted to get to with this AR-15, so I was happy with that. How would these rifles stack up at 600 yards? I was really wondering that. So I got, uh, I got my dope dialed in and we checked the wind on our larger target. And then it was time to move over to the 8 inch by 8 inch steel target. Now that sounds reasonably sized, but let me tell you, when you're 1800 feet away, that <laughs> is tiny. And I shot a few shots and I was up and to the left a little bit, but the grouping looked pretty good. So after loosening up a little bit with the rifle and getting into the zone, it's really what it's all about is getting into the zone, I put down a group. <laughs> Did you see that? Mm, I can kind of see it. Oh. Dude, that thing's ridiculous. I went up later, later and measured. <clears throat> Two of the shots were right over each other and it measured about 1.75 inches for those four shots. I lost my tape measure so I had to use my uh, micro Leatherman tool as a gauge and that works out to about 0.3 MOA. So this is with all of the factors at play I'm really 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 happy with that. Then <coughs> it came time to go over to the AR-15 <coughs> and I was kind of preparing myself here because I was thinking you know this thing is just totally wobbly you know, an AR-15 has all this extra play in the semi-automatic mechanism. You know, the bolt can wiggle around. I'm just, you know, I'm obsessing about it. I'm thinking too hard. And I take a few shots uh, and then it's time to go over to the eight inch target. And by this point, I'm actually getting into the zone here. And I did four shots, two of them again doubled up, and again, it was about 1.75 inches at 600 yards. I was 
absolutely not expecting that. I was not expecting to shoot as good with the AR-15 as I did with the bolt gun, but it just goes to show that if you obsess too much and if you think too hard, sometimes it's counterproductive and really what it's all about, like in a hunting situation, is really getting in tune with your environment, getting in tune with your rifle, you know, finding a place to prone out, having the right form, and then just focusing on the target and connecting with it. Uh, Jesse Riddell from Arbros was talking to me about AR-15s. We were discussing some of the shooting dynamics and he was talking about, it's really important your follow through. Since the gun is more responsive to user input, if you will, you just have to really focus on following through on those shots. And I, I did at 600 yards on this target, and that uh, I think is really paying off. It's really fun doing a lot of this shooting all the time now. And another thing, I loaded the ammo on the RCVS Pro Checker 7, which is a progressive press. And it just goes to show, I got the standard deviation of seven feet per second with those loads from the Pro Checker 7. And both rifles performed really, really well at 600 yards with progressive ammo. So I'll have another video on that uh, coming up. And, and also the kind of hybrid OCW slash 10 shot load development approach that I took with the AR-15 to take the load that I was working with on the bolt gun and to uh, move that over to the AR-15 and confirm it. it. Turns out this one load was the same load I shot with both rifles and you could see at 600 yards that that really translated to some really good results. So I'm loving the project, I'm loving the formula of having the, the locked down gun with few variables and having the semi-auto gun and I got a lot more stories coming up. I got some 90 grade MS SMK bullets on the way. I'm going to try the 95s, I don't know if they'll stabilize in my 1.7 barrel, but I'm going to give them a shot. Uh, we're going to work on that 88 ELDM load as well. Potentially with a powder that's a little bit less bulky, maybe like a ball powder or something like that. I'm looking at a bunch of different options. So what has worked good for you with 2 Fockery? Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear about what you're shooting, what kind of groups you're getting, what kind of results you're seeing with your own rifles. Make sure you're subscribed to Gavin Tube. Make sure you click on the bell for notifications because I've got a lot more content coming up. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading. <laughs>